welcome to day four of Sky VBS. Our Bible story for today takes up where we finished yesterday after Jesus had been turned over to the Romans to be put to death. So let's pick up um, from that point. The Roman soldiers then took Jesus and beat him again most cruelly and prepared to lead him out of the city to the place of death. This was a place called Golgotha in the Jewish language, Calvary in that of the Romans, both words meaning the skull place. As was the custom, Jesus was to carry his own cross to Calvary. He received it and tenderly pressed it to his heart. Though he received the cross from the hand of his Father in heaven, it was really we who placed it upon his shoulder. Tired and broken, with pain of body and grief of soul, Jesus struggled toward the cross. His body swayed beneath the heavy load and he fell to the ground. By his fall, he atoned for our pride and gave us the grace to rise again after we fall into sin. After being nailed to the cross, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Two robbers were hung on crosses, one on the right and the other on the left of Jesus. One of them said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Amen, I say to you, on this day you will be with me in paradise. Standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother, and beside her was John, the disciple whom he loved the best. Other women besides his mother Mary were there. His mother's sister and Mary Magdalene were there as well. Jesus wished to give his mother into the care of John now that he was leaving her. And he said to her, as he looked from her to John, Woman, behold your son. And to John he said, Behold your mother. In the middle of the afternoon, when Jesus had endured three hours of terrible pain on the cross, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After this, he spoke again, saying, I thirst. Someone dipped a sponge into a cup of vinegar and put it upon a reed and gave it to him to drink. Then Jesus spoke his last words upon the cross. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And Jesus died. God died that we sinners might live. At once a great darkness came over the city of Jerusalem. The earth shook. The rocks split. The tombs opened and the dead walked about. At that moment, the veil of the temple between the holy place and the holy of the holies was torn apart by unseen hands from the top to the bottom. The Roman officer who had charge of the soldiers around the cross said, Surely this man was the Son of God. The Jews went to Pilate and asked that the bodies be removed so that they would not spoil the Sabbath. Because it was during the Feast of Passover, this Sabbath was a very solemn day. Pilate, therefore, sent some soldiers to be sure that the crucified were dead before their bodies were taken from the crosses. The soldiers killed the two robbers by breaking their bones. But when the soldiers came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. They did not break his bones, but one of them pierced his side with a lance to be sure that Jesus was dead. John the Apostle saw the water and blood come from the side of Jesus. Nicodemus and Joseph were rulers of the Jews and friends of Jesus. Joseph was a rich man who came from the town of Arimathea. He went boldly to Pilate and asked that the body of Jesus be given to him. Pilate consented. He said, okay. 
Joseph and his friends took the body of Jesus down from the cross and wrapped it in fine linen. And Nicodemus bought some precious spices which they, in which they wrapped the body. Then they placed the body in Joseph's own new tomb, which was a cave dug out of rock, in a garden near the place where the cross stood. And before the entrance of the cave, they rolled a great stone. On the next morning, some of the rulers of the Jews came to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, After three days I will rise again. Give orders, therefore, that the tomb be guarded until the third day, or else his disciples may come and steal him away. And say, and thus say to the people, He has risen from the dead. Pilate said to them, You have a guard. Go, guard it as well as you know how. Then they placed a seal upon the stone so that no one might break it, and they set a watch of soldiers at the door. And the body of Jesus lay in the tomb from the evening of Friday to the dawn of Sunday. When the apostles heard that their master was dead, they returned one by one to Jerusalem. They gathered at the house where they had eaten the last supper with Jesus. They were very sad. They had hoped that Jesus would set up his great earthly kingdom at this feast. They also hoped to be important in that kingdom. Now that Jesus was dead and with him, all their hopes had died. But on Sunday morning, Jesus rose by his own divine power, a glorious victor as he has promised. The earth quaked as he came forth from the tomb and the guards trembled with fear. His body now shone like the sun. The wounds of his hands and feet sparkled like precious jewels. Death was conquered. In his resurrection, the body of Jesus was glorified by being reunited again to his glorified soul. His body took on spiritual qualities, immortality, beauty, and glory freedom, and the power to move about with speed and without hindrance. The divinity shone forth through his glorified body and floods of joy poured into his soul and sacred heart. The resurrection was the crown of the life and work of Jesus as God-man. Because it was the beginning of the glorious life that was due to him as the Son of God, it was also the reward of his life of suffering. The resurrection of Jesus is the strongest proof of his divinity. The whole truth and meaning of our faith rests upon this greatest of all miracles. If Jesus is the Son of God, his teaching must be true, and the church which he founded is the church of the living God. Its sacraments give us the means of salvation by imparting divine grace. This story does have a happy ending, which is, always, which is a good thing. Today's Bible point is, no matter what happens, trust God. Again, Jesus really went through some very terrible things. And I'd like to end our time, this, our Bible story time together, with a quote from Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. I am convinced that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creative will will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Enjoy the rest of VBS, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.